So if you've been using an app called Wunderlist, you might know that the app is going to shut down together with May 6. So back in 2015, the company behind the app, Zex Wunderkinder from Berlin, was acquired by Microsoft. Since then, the development of the app was stopped and in a similar fashion to how it looked with Sunrise Calendar and Accompli Mail, Microsoft decided to rebrand the product to their own and they called it Microsoft To Do. If you are still holding on to Wunderlist, now it's your last chance to move on to another app otherwise you're gonna lose all your data. In this video, I want to highlight some of my favorite alternatives to Wunderlist that I believe are really good. But first of all, I wanted to take a closer look at Microsoft's own revision of the app and see if they actually created a decent replacement for Wunderlist. So overall, the app looks and feels very similar. Microsoft only added a few small touches to the design, making it slightly more fresh and modern. Some of the iconic backgrounds from Wunderlist even made their appearance into the new app, although their look changed quite a lot. So for example, there is TV Tower from Berlin, but Microsoft changed the photo to make it a little bit more minimalistic. And the same applies to all of the other backgrounds that just look more simple. And now there is also even an option to set a solid color as a background. And because it's 2020, there's also dark mode that follows your system settings. I think that design-wise, Microsoft did a great job and the app got much needed polishing. From other new features added by Microsoft, one of the biggest one is My Day, which allows you to plan your day in a more intentional way by suggesting you your overdue and new tasks. And if you're used to Wunderlist, you might be wondering if there is still sound for a completed task. And yes, there is. I think overall Microsoft To Do is a great successor to Wunderlist, especially leaving the collaboration features and making the app fully free. Even though Microsoft is a big company, the privacy policy is very clear and transparent, therefore there is nothing really to pinpoint here. The next step on my list is Todoist, which was always one of the main competitors of Wunderlist. And now it's also the case when it comes to Microsoft To Do. The development of the app never really slowed down and the company behind it, Todoist, keeps adding new features on a regular basis. They recently rolled out an update called Todoist Foundations, which added a proper feature for creating dividers in list, a single task view, as well as many other smaller improvements. The company is currently working on something I'm very excited about, which is Kanban boards that you might know from apps such as Trello. Todoist has a great set of features, including things such as recurring tasks and collaboration. There are some limitations reserved only to paying users, such as labels, reminders, and templates, but the premium subscription is not that expensive, it's priced at 3 euro per month. My next app of choice is one that I'm using every day and it's called Things. It lets you organize your tasks in projects that then you can store in areas that are kind of similar to Wunderlist folders. What's also really nice is that you can treat projects kind of like tasks, so that you can add a start date, deadline, tags, and so on. The app also has a great today view that allows you to split tasks between those for the day and those for the evening, or you can just simply sort them by projects and areas. There are many other features of things that are worth talking about, but what's most important about the app is its design. The app just looks beautiful, it has a very simple, minimalistic UI with nice, colorful patches. But unfortunately, there's quite a few downsides to it. So first, the app is available only on Apple devices. Second, there is no collaboration features whatsoever. And third, it will cost you almost $80 to get all the apps for iOS, iPadOS and macOS. But the last point in my opinion is not that bad, especially if you consider that's more or less the same amount of money you would spend on Todoist in two years. And you can also save a lot of money by just getting apps either for your iPhone or iPad, excluding the one for Mac. And the last app I want to talk about is Apple's own Reminders app that got much needed updates together with iOS 13. Not only did the app get a completely new UI that finally got rid of the skeuomorphic elements like lists and all of the paper background and stuff, Apple please finally update the Notes app, but also scored a few new features. So in the new version of Reminders, you are able to create reminders that have checklists and attachments. The app can also now recognize natural language, so it can suggest you a date or location or even a person that you have in your contacts. So that it can remind you whenever you're messaging someone via iMessage that we have something to say to them. And of course, what's the best part of Reminders is that the app is fully integrated with the Apple ecosystem. Therefore, it's available for free and there's no premium features in it whatsoever. And it also allows you to share lists with your contacts that have Apple devices. And that's really the only downside of the app that you can use it only on Apple's own devices. But there's actually a small exception to the rule. 
So when you go to iCloud.com, you can access all of your tasks and edit them there. Okay, so now quickly to summarize the video. For most of the things, I personally use things um, because I just love how the app looks like. And I think that's a very important part of using any to-do app. You just have to make sure that you keep checking it and using it to actually get the value out of it. But if you're just switching from Wunderlist and you're looking for the most familiar alternative, then I think Microsoft To-Do is a great option. I'm very impressed with Microsoft did to the app and I'm not nearly as disappointed as I was when they acquired Sunrise Calendar. Rest in peace, I still miss you. Todoist is also a great app and that's actually my second choice since I'm using it quite a lot for shared lists. And to be honest, the only thing that I'm missing in the free version are reminders. But for those, again, I just use Apple's own reminders app. Uh, but yeah, it's only available on the Apple devices. So which of these four apps should you use? I think that really depends on what your needs are, what devices are you using and how much are you willing to spend. And I hope that with this video I made the choice a little bit easier for you. That's all I had to say about best alternatives to Wunderlist. I hope that you won't be missing the app too much and you're gonna find a great alternative to it. If you would like to see more videos like this, welcome to subscribe to the channel. I'll be making more videos about technology and coffee. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.